I will now show some of the um, Gennaro user interface features that have been added to Gennaro in the past. So all these features are added in version 2.30 or earlier, but these are important enough features that we think you should be using in your application already. So the first feature I'm going to show is multi-dialogue. So the old Infamix 4GL program, if we were in a master detail, we would be in the top in the master, but we couldn't get down to the detail unless we finished the header and then we were down in the detail. But we couldn't click to get back to the master, so if we made a mistake, we had to make sure that we'd programmed in, into the program a way for the user to get back. The introduction of multi-dialogue gives what the user expects to see and that we can be in the master or detail at, any, at the same point in time and if we find that we're in the detail and we've made a mistake, then to go back to the master, it is just a case of clicking on that master area at the top. The other area that um, the multi-dialogues came in handy is quite a common pattern. I call it the starter pattern. So the old Infamix 4GL program, you may have had a construct statement at the top. So you know, a asterisk, get down to the bottom, say how many copies you want. So here we are in an input, but we couldn't get back to our construct statement at the top. Infamix 4GL only enabled you to either be in an input or a construct statement at once. You couldn't be in both. Using multi-dialogue, we are able to combine those two dialogues together. So here, I can freely move between the construct and the input down the um, bottom. And that's just using the multi-dialogue feature. So very quickly, other places the multi-dialogue feature came in handy. Two lists. How do you move things from one to the other? You know, you're either in this dialogue, this display array, or you need to click a button to move into the other display array. You couldn't click to go back. Using multi-dialogue, you can now freely be in each of those two lists. And similarly, um, a list box. So here we've got a um, the old GUI list box. Using multi, but you had to actually go select to select the value, and then you couldn't go back. Using multi-dialogue, we're able to construct that as one dialogue so the user is freely able to move between all the widgets of the dialogue. So the introduction of multi-dialogue with a dialogue statement enabled you to combine the various inputs together. So here we've used dialogue to combine the construct and the input dialogues together into one dialogue. And we just think that's um, a more, it's a more modern GUI metaphor. That's what the developer expects to see. They expect to be able to move freely around the page across the various dialogues and be able to click in fields and to be able to go there. The next thing I'll show very quickly is um, the drag and drop example. So here we have our famous truck and tree dialogue example. So I'll just widen that a bit. But we'd be able to drag and drop from one side to the other. So not only does this show drag and drop, but it also shows an example of the tree container and the various types of drags you're allowed. So here I'm dragging an order on and I'm selecting a truck and it'll the order will get dropped on that truck. I can also move the trucks around, I've got to be a bit more careful, but wait for a black line. Yep. And so we can rearrange things within the array, or we can drag back where the position is not important. And you can see the black line just um, appears to indicate that it doesn't really matter where you're dropping it, it's just going to get appended to the bottom. So we, with the drag and drop, we can also show um, this allowing of drags. So in this instance, you can see this order is too heavy for this truck, so it's not allowing me to drop that order on the truck. So um, drag and drop, a modern GUI metaphor that gives your applications um, more of what a user is expecting to see in their application. It gives them an easier way to do things than what was previously possible using a 4GL application. Next I will show some web components. So um, the key thing, I suppose, with web components is the two-way interaction. So note as I click within the chart, the current month up there is changing. So clicking with inside the web component, it's able to pass information back to the 4GL program. Conversely, the 4GL program can pass the information of the chart. So I'll just switch to this chart because it shows it a lot better. But if I change the values, notice how the chart is changing based on the um, values that I'm changing. So that's the key thing with the web component is that two-way interaction and able to reuse third-party tools such as charting tools as in this example to um, draw your chart. So rather than us having creating a charting library for you, you can reuse someone else's. You can also use web components for things like Google Maps. So again, the two-way interaction 
where are we speaking today? Today I'm in Auckland. So changing the 4GL changes the Google Maps. And if I click around inside the Google Maps, you can see the latitude and longitude. So that two-way interaction. So things like zooming in, zooming out, you got the full functionality of the Genaro of the third-party web component that you're using there. The last um, web component I'm going to show is probably a feature not too many people have used, but the concept of um, using the image map. So in this example, Genaro application, using up nearly the whole screen, and I'm just able to tell on what image the user has clicked on. So you could use this for things like pause screens, or kiosks, or touch pads, you know, just um, anything where the user can come along, click on an image or part of an image, and have that be um, triggered back into the 4GL program. So things like multi-dialogue, drag and drop, web component, they're new features we've added to Gennaro over the years. They're not new to Gennaro 2.40, but we want to take this opportunity to reinforce that they are there and that you should seriously consider using them in your app's application.